Okay, Google, turn on the lights. You got it. Turn on the fan. Here's some fan action for you. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is safe and well. Uh, we're actually hunkered down here in the state of Oaxaca in the south of Mexico, uh, just limiting our time out and about, and that gives me a good opportunity to get some uh, time inside the truck, uh, working on some projects I've been wanting to do, and staying in the nice air conditioning. Hopefully that doesn't bother you guys too much, uh, the wind noise. Um, but anyway, uh, a common question I get a lot in the comments, and everyone who comes into the truck and sees it, is how do I automate everything? What do I use for automation? And that's a really tough question to answer because I use so many little things, little bits and bobs, all pieces of the puzzle to make it work. Um, so today I have two projects I want to work on. I don't know if I'll get them both done today, but uh, I figured I'd take you guys along for the ride and kind of explain some of the stuff, some of the systems I use and how easy it can be. All right, so like I said, there's a couple things I want to uh, automate here today. Uh, one of them being our max air ceiling fan. It does have buttons here where I can uh, push to start, turn it on, off, uh, temperature, or rather fan speed up and down and direction in and out and so on. And the other thing I wanted to automate is our air conditioner, which you might have seen in a recent video. It lives back here behind this wall uh, and it's ducted up to the vent there, of course and it has buttons on the front of it that you can press to do various things uh, but it's kind of kludgy to get back there and uh, it came with a remote control which is handy except we're usually sitting over here the remote doesn't work and even if you come here it doesn't work you gotta get these bins out of the way and even then sometimes it doesn't work so those are the two things we're going to tackle today so let's get right into it all right so before you run off because you don't have that air conditioner or this ceiling fan uh, this video is going to be very broad with the fundamentals of how to do a lot of this stuff that uh, I've used for all sorts of projects, uh, automating all kinds of things. So uh, take it with a grain of salt, uh, just follow along even though this isn't uh, something you're modding today. I hope to just put a bug in your ear that one day when you need to automate something, you'll remember this and, and look up some of these uh, tools that we're going to use. All right, so like I said, I've used uh, these fundamentals to automate all kinds of stuff. Uh, a friend of mine has a big shop in a farm with uh, three garage doors on the, on the shop and then one on the house. And uh, I, I built just a, a simple relay board with a, a Wemos module to remotely press the buttons on his uh, garage doors. That way, no matter which vehicle or tractor or piece of equipment they're running in, he can pull out his phone and remotely trigger those doors to open. Uh, and even fun stuff like this little Wemos module here with a little screen on it. Uh, I built one of these into a 3D printed uh, subscriber counter ornament for Levi Allen at Left Coast Media. Uh, I have one that we uh, put a temperature sensor on and we put in our parents' house so when they leave town for uh, extended periods of time, a few days or whatever, they can check in on the temperature because their furnace sometimes is finicky and, and they're just concerned that the, that the heat is on. All those sorts of things uh, you can automate with. Another thing I've been wanting to do is install one of these little motor driver boards uh, with a Wemos module to control the fans in our freezer uh, compartment. So. Our freezer compressor is in a compartment under the sink and it gets warm, so I've installed uh, little case fans. In fact, this case fan, this is a PC computer case fan, but it failed and the new replacement ones that I was able to find here in Mexico sound like Harrier jets. Uh, so I need to PWM those motors down to slow them down, maybe turn them up when we're driving to full tilt for fun and turn them off at night when it's not needed, all that sort of stuff. So. Those are some ideas for things you can do. All right, so one of the reasons I've hesitated or it's difficult for me to make this video is the topic is so broad. I use so many little things. Uh, for example, a lot of the automation I've done at home when we had a home and the core basics in the truck are handled by a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is a Pi 3. They're about 35 bucks, 40 bucks now for the new ones. Uh, this is a Raspberry Pi Zero, uh, little 
it's a little version of the same thing, fewer USB ports and not quite as powerful, but uh, they're five bucks. The new ones with Wi-Fi built in are 10. Uh, so that's that. And one of my favorite go-to modules is the Wemos D1 Mini. Uh, I've gone through probably 50 of these. I usually have 10 on me at all times. And when I have less than 10, I get panicky and order some more. So these are great. They're $3.50 for an 80 megahertz processor with Wi-Fi, eight digital I.O. pins, and uh, serial analog inputs, PWMs on four of the pins, I think. Uh, so they're an amazing little unit. They plug in with USB for uh, programming, and then you hook them up to whatever to uh, do the function you need it to do. All right, so the function you need it to do. Most often it's switching an electrical load in the context of what we're doing here. So this is a relay board. Uh, ignore these three burnt up relays that are missing. Uh, it had nothing to do with the light show three videos ago. Uh, this is a relay board. They're cheap, so cheap you can't buy the relays. I think they're about 10 bucks uh, and they have optocoupler isolated inputs. And so you can connect this or a Raspberry Pi or whatever flavor you choose directly onto these header pins thusly and then power it up and switch these loads using uh, one of the methods I'll show you here in a moment. So these are really great um, and I, you could have used this, you can certainly use this as uh, to control my air conditioner. I could have used this and I could have used this for the ceiling fan to switch the buttons but it's a little bit big uh, if you're automating Christmas lights or you know things in here. Uh, for example, I have two of these mounted beneath my seat in the electrical compartment. Uh, they're great. They're great options, but for our use they're going to be a little bit big and we need something smaller. All right, so there's some other bits and bobs that you will find useful. Uh, perf board uh, is a fiberglass PCB material with copper traces on it. Uh, they're, they're really handy for prototyping. I'll get back to that in just a moment. Uh, but what you might find handier is a breadboard like this. And this is just a plastic block with pins and all the pins are connected uh, this way, but not this way. And they're handy because you take whatever electronic bit you need, jam it in there, and then you need a relay driver chip, get one of those, jam it in there, ta-da, you got yourself a circuit, sort of. Uh, and then you get little jumper wires like this these are the fancy kind with pre-stripped ends and uh, little handles on them, but you can jam them in there and make your connection from this pin to that pin. And that's fine for prototyping, uh, proof of concept, make sure your plan is going to work. But once you know it's going to work, then you'd want to uh, use a board like this for a semi-permanent sort of installation. So it's much the same. The rows are connected this way, but not this way. So when you put a chip in there thusly, and then you would solder it across the back, then you've got good solid connections. So that's uh, a fundamental thing you kind of need to know about before we get into this too much. Uh, I'm going to glaze over some of the details. This is not going to be an exhaustive how to automate something with how to solder and the, the ins and outs of programming. Just an overview just, uh, so you can get your feet wet. So another thing I really like about the Wemos modules is uh, they're very low power, so I can usually power them parasitically off of the appliance I'm automating. So in the, uh, in the case of the air conditioner here, I was able to take the voltmeter to the back of the control panel and just probe around and you can usually see pins on chips that are bigger than the others with a big capacitor next to them and find power. Now these run on 5 volts or USB. Uh, you could alternatively, of course, just get a little USB power adapter from your old iPhone 3 uh, plug in a USB and plug it into the wall and have it next to the item you're powering. We're not doing that today. Uh, you, but you need to find 5 volts of power. So I've done that on that board. So you have the 5 volts and then the second problem is the buttons. So a little diagram of a button here. So there's some sort of magic pixies in here and they want to jump this gap to over here but they can't jump the gap, so there's a button. And when you press down on the button, it connects those two and all the pixies go to the party. And that's all well and good if you have a mechanical push button and you're thrilled with that. Um, but if you want to control it remotely, we need to get those 
uh, buttons pushed remotely. Now you could of course get a really long stick and poke the button with the stick, but instead we're going to connect a switch in parallel with that other switch. And so if you push this button or this button, it's the same difference. It, the, the pixies will go this way or this way, whichever way is uh, most convenient for them. Taking this one step further, we don't want it just another mechanical button, so we're going to use an electrical mechanical button. So this is uh, the contact in a relay. This is not exactly how you draw a relay, but uh, suffice to say, if a relay is basically this, and if you put pixies into this coil, not both positive, one has to be negative, if you put pixies into this coil, the magnetic action of the magnetic electromagnetic coil pushes the button closed. And so then you just need to put power into that relay and it pushes the button for you remotely. If you know how relays work, skip everything I just said. Now, there are more complicated, simpler ways to do that. For example, here's one uh, board I wired up that uses optocouplers. Uh, it turns out it didn't work and I won't get into why, but it's basically the same thing as a relay. It's a button. But instead of a button, there's an LED. And the LED pushes the button. That's not how it works, but basically you put power here, the LED turns on and closes the button. That's really great because it isolates these two systems. If you've got furious angry pixies over here and you don't want them talking to your polite kind pixies, it, it has this layer of isolation that you don't have problems, uh, you know, spikes feeding back into your IO, stuff like that. I'm not going to get into a bunch of details. I know there's better ways to do it than I'm going to show you today, but I'm using what I have. Uh, uh, also, I guess I will tell you, the reason this didn't work is because the control board in that air conditioner uses uh, plus 5 volts for a lot of the logic and negative 5 to switch the buttons. And rather than trying to futz around trying to uh, make a negative 5 signal to feed to their little processor, I'm taking the easy way and using little tiny relays. So let's get into that. So here's the basic premise of wiring this thing up for how we're going to do it. We've got a Wemos. Uh, D1 Mini. This is a uh, 2803. It's a Darlington transistor array and basically this is exactly like the relays I just showed you or the optocouplers uh, in that it uses a small amount of power to switch a bigger amount of power. It's an amplifier and uh, and the reason is these little the output pins on the Wemos aren't powerful enough to power the relays directly. Uh, they just don't have enough power to switch them, so instead we'll use the outputs from here to switch on the uh, uh, 2803. It has eight outputs, so we can control up to eight relays, and we'll use that to then power the relays. Now check out these cute little cuties. I found these five volt uh, relays kicking around. They're signal level, so they can't handle a lot of current. You wouldn't want to switch a light or a motor or anything with these. Uh, I think they max out at 150 milliamps. Uh, so they're tiny, they're called signal relays, uh, but they're cute and they fit the bill and they're tiny so I can jam a bunch of them on there. And through the uh, magic of TV swaps, this is the completed module. And now you can't quite see it because it's all soldered together, but there is one of these 2803 chips right down the middle underneath the Wemos, and then four relays down the side here. One of them I had to turn sideways because I didn't have enough pins, and that looks pretty pro. Amazing. The back, not so much. Um, as I said, these pads in the uh, proto boards are all connected this way, with the exception of these, which go that way, but they're all connected this way, so that's fine. You can uh, run wires from here to there, or connections from here to there, but sometimes you need to go to the here to there, and that's where wires come in, and it turns into a big mess, uh, a rat's nest of wire. This isn't actually that bad, but something to to know. You're going to you're going to need to play Sudoku or crosswords, and if that's your puzzle, you're going to love this. 
And so, next step is to pull the control panel out of the air conditioner. Great. All right, gotta make this quick because it is hot out and without this board, the AC doesn't run. So, here's the unit. Single-sided PCB makes it pretty simple. And push buttons. Exciting. So, uh, just to give you an overview of what I did to find power, usually the last two pins on a chip usually are power. But you get your voltmeter out and you probe around until you find power. Uh, and I found five volts and I loaded it with one of the relays and it stayed on. So that's enough for what we need to do. All right, so the next step is to find the contacts on the back of the board for the button that you want to actuate. So these are very clearly uh, on the back of the board here. So you can hear as I push the button, the voltmeter confirms that uh, those do that. Uh, sometimes going to the back of the button is the very easiest thing to do. Sometimes following it to a different trace or to a, a connector might be an easy way of doing it. Uh, but I've done it already. Uh, you can see here I've soldered just some legs of a resistor here and there and I use these uh, quick clip clips just to clip on thusly and then clipped onto our circuit board in the correct places and I verified everything works so that's how I know this video is going to be a success <sighs> but now I need to actually do it so follow along in the fun uh, you're gonna need a cheapo soldering iron this is a Weller it's a reputable brand name uh, middle of the road quality sort of thing. I'm going to desolder these uh, resistor legs off of here. Uh, amazing. And now solder on some wire. So I didn't really show you this before, but I installed a uh, header pin connector. Just one of the ones that came uh, with the Wemo boards, they come in a baggie like this with uh, various headers and pins. So I just reused one of those, or utilized one of those for that. All right, so there we have it a bunch of little dingly danglies on a connector. And the next step is to hook them up to the board. All right, so then these are the output wires from the relays. That is up. The black wire is up. The black wire is down. The black wire for fan control speed. And of course, black for power. Now let's go try it out, because it's getting really hot in here. Alright, so I've got the control panel installed back in the air conditioner unit. You can see my header row here, and I've got one, key, uh, one pin missing, so it's keyed, and I plugged the hole there so I can't plug it in backwards, and uh, it just plugs in, obviously. Scavages power from the control board, and it's all powered up. And for aesthetic value, I'll put the front cover back on. Oh, so classy. And then, uh, the current software I have installed on that Arduino Wemos board is the, uh, the advanced web server demo, which I'll show you more about later. But suffice to say, I just have a uh, static U uh, IP address, 192.168.10.50, and then I s uh, just add a, a suffix of power, and it kicks it on. And then if I want to uh, push the volume down or temperature down button, I would put the suffix down. Now, of course, just controlling it from a web browser at your computer and typing URLs and nerding out isn't a practical way of doing it. Uh, there are real reasons why you would do it this way. Uh, they're called webhooks, and I'll get more into that in the software later on in the video. Um, I did really glaze over a lot of the uh, details of how I built this and how to wire it uh, because it was mostly half done by the time I started recording this video. 
but I do need to start now from scratch on the Max Air fan controller, so it will have that detail coming up here next. So let's go get into that. Okay, at the Max Air fan now, uh, the first thing you need to do is figure out uh, which buttons you want to press. Now, on this uh, keypad right here, there's power, uh, open, close, fan speed up, down, and in and out, and those are the buttons available. Uh, before we get into that, I just want to show you something. On the uh, control panel, or rather the control board for this fan, there are these jacks provided uh, for uh, external keypads. You can purchase a uh, volume up, down, temperature up, down, all those buttons on a little keypad that you would mount on the wall if your fan is too high or you want a convenient permanent button place. And for that, you would use a RJ11 or the RJ45, which is an Ethernet connection, and it would just plug in there like that. And while I could have bought one of those uh, keypads with the buttons on it and reverse engineered it to figure out what was what, uh, I just got a uh, dug out a Cat5 Ethernet cable. All right, so having plugged in the Ethernet cable there, I got one of these uh, RJ45 breakout connectors, and it's basically just a, a jack with the pins. And using a breadboard like this, we can plug it in there, and then plug this in there, and then get a little jumper wire like this and by jamming this in there and this in there I, you can decode which wires do what, do what and uh, you know tell which buttons are which function. Unfortunately uh, all the probing I did I can get on off to work and the temperature mode which uh, just sets it to a, a temperature control so it just tries to maintain 72 degrees or whatever you set it to and it adjusts the fan speed to maintain that. Uh, unfortunately I couldn't quite figure out how to uh, get up and down fan speed working which is the most important ones to me and further I abandoned this whole method because if you zoom in up here you can see this uh, cat5 cable whoops isn't going to fit in here, short of hollowing out a hole in my ceiling or, you know, butchering this cable somehow to get it to fit. So I abandoned that pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do instead is just hijack these buttons uh, on the panel. They come up to a 0.1 header row and that just plugs in on the back of the control board here. All right, so if you're going to hijack some buttons, you need to decode which pin is which button. Uh, these are multiplexed, which makes it one step more complicated. I won't get into that too deeply right now, but uh, basically you get your voltmeter and set it to continuity test so that when the two contacts touch, it beeps. And then you connect the wires from your multimeter to the pins on the thingamadoodle and press the button. And when you press the button, if your wires are connected and don't fall off, you can tell that pins two and three, or rather two, yeah, two and three here are the power button on off. So then you would go through and, and map that out and have that available. All right, so let's move now to the uh, laptop screen. Uh, I've got software called Fritzing and uh, I'm going to show you how to wire this up. Welcome back everyone. Uh, let's get right into it. This is the software I'll be using called Fritzing. Uh, I've used it in the past and got a lot of questions, so I'll, and I didn't mention what software I was using, so I will today. Fritzing. Go look it up. It's available for Windows, Mac OS, and Unix, which I'm using today. Uh, and when you uh, open a new project, you start like this with a, a pin board, a breadboard, and you can take your resistors and plug them in there and visualize what you're doing. Uh, these are, of course, physical prototyping tools you can buy and have, and I recommend having one, uh, but they start you off like that. I'm not going to do that today, uh, but just to show you really quickly, 
let's take a Lemos module, zoom in a bit there, and a relay. There's a relay, and that's a bad example of a relay, but whatever. And a uh, 7805 regulator. That's a nice one there. And so positive voltage goes in here. This goes to ground. And 5 volts goes from the output to the 5 volt rail on the Mimos. You get where this is going. You can connect all your wires and and visualize your connections and, and review them. Uh, what's also really nice is you can go to the schematic and uh, see here the uh, the bus lines and route whatever you need to route this way. If you want to connect this to here, which you would never do, you can do that. And then when you go back to breadboard mode, it has this uh, wire that it knows you want to connect, but you have to then visualize it. So that's cool, and it does PCB layouts as well, uh, showing these uh, vias you need to connect, and you can route them however you want, and even auto routes. So uh, that's that. It's kind of a neat free program, so go check it out. Now let's jump to what I already have, a work in progress. All right, so uh, this is the uh, project we have for the Max Air Fan Controller button pusher over Wi-Fi. And I've laid out some of the components here just to speed things up. But uh, basically, I've got a voltage regulator. I've just prototyped this with the uh, 7805, although I will be using a switching voltage regulator. I'll show you in person in a bit. Uh, but the, the premise is the same. 12 volts in here, 5 volts out here. And of course you need a ground. The Wemos D1 Mini shown here. This is the uh, 2803 Darlington driver array and uh, the 5 relays shown to scale with all their pins shown thusly. And the Max Air header pin uh, that we need to interface to. So, uh, very simply, this tool allows you to, well, first you'd go into schematic view and lay out all of your lines you need to make. So, let's look at this relay. Uh, this part of the relay here is the coil, and when it receives power, it closes this switch. So, that's the part that's not really shown in the breadboard view. It's kind of hidden behind the generic relay image. but these two connections here, I'll zoom in on this one, this connection and this connection are the uh, coil and so if you put power to one and ground to the other it will close the coil and make a connection between these two switched pins. So I'll, we'll just we'll just do one to uh, to make my point here. So this What's happening is the Wemos will send out a positive voltage out of D1 into this pin, and that will switch a negative voltage out of here, slightly amplified enough to power these relays, and so that will come out of here a negative signal, a negative voltage ground. And then here, on the other pin of the relay, we're going to need to provide 5 volts. Okay, there. so I just fast forwarded through that, but you can see here on the red wire I'm providing 5 volts to each of the relays. That uh, daisy chains from one to the next and runs back here to the output of the 5 volt regulator. And then uh, each of the relays will be provided ground by this Darlington array. And that's shown with these uh, wires here, and we need to make them real. So we'll do that real quick. And even though I've finished the air conditioner uh, circuit board without doing this step, uh, by drawing this diagram to visualize everything, it did cause me some problems in remembering which pin was which and what was connected where. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to be doing it uh, for this one. It's going to save me some time and help me illustrate this uh, process to you guys. So what I'm doing here is completely unnecessary, but I've color-coded the wires just for clarity. 
uh, you can see D1, D2, D3, and D4, and D5 are the uh, I.O. that we will be feeding into the Darlington array. Again, this voltage will go high, 5 volts, and then this Darlington driver will amplify it and send a uh, much higher current down these wires and flip the relays. So when this pin turns on, it turns this on, which turns the relay on. And then, in turn, the coils, these two contacts on the other side of the coil, will touch together. So, uh, as I showed on the, uh, up on the bed there with the, the control panel off of the fan, you need to map out what, uh, which two pins you need to connect on this header to achieve the function you want to do. So, I've written it out here on a list. Pin 1 uh, is connected to pins 3 to, uh, to push the, the temperature or the fan speed up button and pin 4 for the uh, uh, the down button. It's either f speed or temperature. I'm going to fumble all over that this whole time, I suppose. But uh, let's keep this the right color. Uh, it's going to be orange, just to keep the functions straight here in our heads. And then pin 4 is the down button, and it is blue. Wonderful. So now, when this relay is actuated, it's going to connect purple to orange, or pin 1 to pin 3, and that is up, the fan speed up button. And when this relay is powered by this blue wire, uh, when this uh, uh, relay is actuated, it's going to connect the blue to purple, or pin 1 to pin 4, which is down. So I'm going to go through this now and make the rest of these connections in fast forward. <sighs> okay, there we have it. So, 7805 regulator powers this whole schmozzle, and the outputs go through the amplifier, get amplified, power the relays, which click the contacts closed, and this whole maze uh, is uh, what is appropriate for my max fan that we're trying to control. And this is a little bit uh, juvenile and colorful crayons and such, but it's sometimes more simpler to read than a, a full-on schematic, something like this, uh, which has overlapping wires and you can't quite follow stuff quite as easily. So if you're starting out, this is a great way to do it, a great visual guide for when I go to actually solder this all together. All right, back to reality here, everyone. I've got uh, the computer here with the, the diagrams I've just shown you, and I'm just going to keep that up as a visual reference, keep me in check as I'm doing this. For those who aren't following along with our whole journey, we're actually in an RV traveling through Mexico, so I don't have all of the perfect equipment along with me. Uh, I'm working with what I have, so I've got a makeshift solder stand out of a chunk of angle iron here, aluminum rather. Uh, but this is what we're up to. We're going to connect these five relays and the ULN 2803 Darlington Array uh, to the board. So to show you a bit of that, uh, although I'm going to cut and uh, maybe show you some interesting bits, but I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing. So let's get to it here. <laughs> Alright, there we have it, the uh, driver and the relay is all wired up, and at this point I like to take just a, a pair of flush cut nippers and nip all these pins right down to uh, flush with the board, and the reason for that is uh, I need to go in between many of these pins with the little Dremel and the, and the little uh, die grinder end mill bit there and cut some of these traces in between for various uh, other jumpers connections we need to make and sometimes those pins get in the way further they're sharp and pokey and they will poke you and uh, also there's some risk that they'll cut through the uh, you know any other jumper wires you have it m they might cut through the insulation so uh, it's probably not recommended or taught in any other book, 
but I like to do it. Okay guys, there they are, all trim, nice and flush. And uh, I will re-solder, go over and re-solder all of these uh, once I'm done, or closer to done. Uh, but now, I'm going to go to my drawing on the computer and note some of more connections that need to be made. So, pin 9 needs ground, so I've just made a little note here to make a jumper from here to there. And all of the relays need power, shown in the red wire on that diagram. So, those are all... Uh, these pins. So there, 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 and there. So all of these little blue marks I've made will jump that connection from each of the relays to this uh, horizontal plane, which you can see is the 5 volt power. So all of the relays will have power, and then I just need to connect from the output pins of the Darlington array to each of the pins on the on the relays. But first I need to go outside and, and do some trimming, so see you in a bit. Alright guys, so today is tomorrow. I've got the circuit board all figured out here. It is a little bit of a Sudoku word crossword puzzle to wire this because you're limited in one axis. But I got it all wired up. It's not the most beautiful board I've ever done but uh, it was pretty tight getting it all on there. Uh, as you can see, I've got all five relays on the one side of the board there with the 2803, and it just worked out best to have the Wemos module backpacked on pins on the back there. Uh, one other little change I did was the uh, circuit board for the Max fan it has the uh, connector here on the bottom for the keypad buttons. And I just soldered another row on the back side of the circuit board so that I can actually just plug this right on like that. So that fits nice. Uh, the only catch with this is the corner of the circuit board extends out past the edge of the original circuit board and it doesn't fit into the, into the fan housing like that. Uh, we could trim it, but it's a very sensitive electronic... Alright, so a few days has passed. Uh, I've been fooling around having some fun with the programming. Uh, as you can imagine, it's all installed and put back up in the ceiling here. And uh, I thought I'd, we'll get into the programming and the software here in just a second, but I thought I'd show off some of the, uh, the functionality I have now. So, okay Google, turn on the fan. Here's some fan action for you. So, as you can probably guess, I've voice activated all functions. I can say set the fan speed to 8. It's already set to 8. Okay, Google. Set the fan speed to 3. Okay, fan speed at 3. So, uh, if you have one of these fans, you know that you can set the fan speed up or down and the direction to in or out but uh, there's no indication as to what it's currently set to and uh, and even for in and out it's hard to tell especially on the lower fan speed settings if it's blowing in or out and so uh, I've added variables to the, all the states that are toggling so the on off uh, fan direction and the lid which you can open and close the uh, You can open and close them uh, independent of the state of the fan. So you can leave the fan running and close the lid if you wanted to. We rarely do that. Uh, but the other thing is the fan speed. Uh, it's indicated and it's stored in a variable in the Wemos and online uh, that uh, you can see what the fan speed is. And that's really nice if you are away from the truck. This is not so amazing if you're sitting here, but uh, if we're out and about and we want to check the temperature of the inside of our truck which we can do here uh, and then say oh wow we need to turn the fan up then we can do that and see what the fan speed is and its setting uh, and the other nice thing is rather than pushing the down button seven times to achieve the, the low speed that I like at night uh, I've saved a variable uh, with the fan speed setting so it knows what its current fan speed is and if I slide the slider to 10 
it hits the button nine times and, and takes it right to 10. So that is that. Uh, direction in out, trust me, it all works. And the uh, air conditioner I have wired to blink right now as well. So we can close the ceiling fan, turn on the air conditioner. And if you heard it kick in there and set the temperature down, it's already at the bottom. Uh, so yeah, it's all working good. Let's uh, jump onto the computer here and I'll show you some quick code examples. I know this video is getting really long already, so I might need to give a fairly abbreviated explanation. And if there's any interest, make a supplementary video. All right, so getting into the programming end of things, the Wemos D1 Mini is an Arduino variant. And to uh, program that, you will need the Arduino IDE. Uh, it's a free download. You can go and get it from the link in the description. Uh, one uh, the first steps you're going to need to do is uh, to use the Wemos boards is go to File, Preferences, and Additional Board Manager URLs is at the bottom here. Uh, you're going to need to paste in that link from the description. And basically what that does is just tells the Arduino IDE about all these extra boards uh, that, that you might want to use. Uh, I'm actually using the D1 Mini Pro, which has the external Wi-Fi connector on there, but uh, you can choose the one you have, probably the D1 Mini. And the second little uh, thing you need to do is include libraries. Uh, so you would click under Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and it'll pop up this, this fun times, and you enter Blink, B-L-Y-N-K. And at the very top comes up uh, the blank libraries and you install the newest version works fine click install I've already done it so it's grayed out for me and uh, let's get right into a first uh, example real quick click file examples basics and then blink b-l-i-n-k as into blink and LED uh, as not to be confused with b-l-y-n-k which is the the MQTT service we're using for this. We'll get to that. Anyway, on screen, you can see a very basic 36 lines of code, including 19 lines of comments. Uh, and basically, this has a setup line on 26, meaning this is the setup stuff that happens when we uh, turn the thing on. And all that's happening is it's setting the mode of the pin, of the uh, LED built-in pin, to be an output very basic, and then a void loop, which basically loops through that uh, code until forever. And what it's doing here is writing LED built-in to high, meaning it's turning the power to that pin high or on. Delay of a thousand milliseconds, and then digital write that same pin low, and then another delay of a uh, thousand milliseconds. So very obviously that's just going to blink the LED once per second. So I will up here click the uh, upload button. It takes about three or five seconds to upload. Serial port not connected. You need to go in here under tools, port, and check that you've got your uh, serial port selected. In my case, USB 0. Uh, you'll also notice at this time I have these network ports. And I'm not going to dwell on that. I don't have time uh, in this video. But another really, 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 really cool feature uh, about the 8266-based uh, Wemos boards is they have over-the-air updates. So even though I've installed this, soldered it up, and installed it up in my roof, I can still update the software over Wi-Fi uh, if I want to make any changes in the future. So that's what you see here is the uh, over-the-air update ports or Wi-Fi update ports for uh, the air conditioner, the max fan, as well as the relay board that I'm just playing around with here. Uh, but for this one, for right now, I'm going to click USB 0 and push this again. Should work better this time. There we go. Connecting, writing. Uh, you'll see the LED blipping as it's programming and then blinking once per second, as expected. All right, so uh, for the next example, I'm going to show you Blink. 
uh, we installed the Blink library already, uh, and I will put up this uh, sketch on the website so you guys can download it and play with it if you want. Uh, and But first and foremost, what you need to do is go and get the Blink app. This is uh, on the App Store and Google Play Store, and it's kind of a cool building block deal where you can pause your program, add a button, and just a new button shows up here, and you can drag and drop it and and fit it to whatever you want. And then you go in here, click on there, click on Wemos module is the target thing you want to control. Pin, uh, actually I'm using virtual pins. Pick a fun one, 27 seems like a good number. And uh, yeah, it's a building block for making a little app that's really slick. So you got that, uh, you get an auth code when you set this up uh, and they just send it to you by email and then you jump into your Arduino IDE uh, in here you set up the constants of what you're controlling I'm just calling them relays 1 through 8 uh, you paste your auth token in here under the auth token line uh, your Wi-Fi uh, credentials go there and I'm not going to dwell on this for very long let's just show you you program it to USB just as I did and then Uh, amazing. And if you want to go in here now, and rather than having that uh, a momentary button, let's say it's your lights in here, you want it to stay stuck on, you'd click the switch mode to switch, and then play again, and then it sticks. Yeah. Hopefully you guys can see and hear that relay clicking. So that's that. And that, in fact, is exactly how we do our lights in here. And the other fun thing is web hooks. Uh, so the trickery I was showing you before where I say, okay, Google, turn off the lights. Okay. So you can see it turns off that pin. And so let's get into that next. All right, so how do I get it to work with the goggles? Uh, with webhooks is the short answer. Uh, you remember at uh, the air conditioner there when I first demoed the advanced web server sketch, uh, you would just go to the URL or IP address 192.168.10.50 slash power, and that runs that little section of code to turn on the, the air conditioner. Uh, now you could do that using the Google Assistant if this and that method I'm going to show you in a moment, uh, but it requires you porting through a firewall and some other rigmarole. So uh, I prefer going through the Blink API. So going to the computer here, uh, Blink has this uh, API which allows you to set a pin value or write a pin value and basically you would paste in your uh, auth token right here and the whatever pin you want to do let's say ours is v1 and call that resource and you can see here that is the URL uh, that you would call with a webhook so then let's go in here let's make a new uh, Google Assistant event thingy you click on explore it's super buried and this is the only little place where you you find it and it's not well indicated but click the plus uh, button there and if this then that works on that simple logic if this and in this case we want Google Assistant to be the this say a simple thing what do you want to say fan on another way to say it turn the fan on another way to say it turn on the fan and what do you want the assistant to say boo Or whatever you want it to say and then you press uh, create trigger and then there's the that function what happens if that happens well that's easy webhooks make a web request and you just paste in the URL for what you want it to do now I've blurred this out because this is my uh, auth code so uh, you want to keep that secret uh, there is some chance that somebody could hack and and try every possible auth code variation until they've turned on your ceiling fan 
So again, you wouldn't want to use this uh, for your starter motor on your engine or the self-destruct button at your house, but for turning a fan off and on, the odds of that getting hacked are pretty low. Your results may vary. Uh, but anyway, you put your URL in there that I just showed you how to get on this uh, Blink uh, API page and get and then ta-da, press cr create action. And that's it. Now, it is a little bit tedious because you need to go and do this for every possible function. Turn the fan up, down, uh, you know, power on, power off, all those things. So it does take a little bit of time, but not too hard. And that's all it takes to uh, do the webhooks. And that's, that's the funnest way to do it. It's the most impressive. All right, guys, this got way longer than I intended, and I know I didn't uh, hit all of the questions perfectly on the head. I did try my best, uh, given the time we have here. So uh, maybe if there's enough interest, I'll do some more videos in the future, uh, you know, with one concise little project, like our fan for the fridge controller, for an example, uh, or, you know, just the relay board or something a little more concise about the Raspberry Pi and Python and how that's all controlled using Blink. Uh, it's just overwhelming how much stuff there is to talk about and how long-winded I can can be. So thanks so much for watching. I, I'd be interested to see how many of you make it to this part of the video. Uh, leave a comment down below saying that you made it here. That'd be a hoot. Oh, I forgot about that other thing. Yeah. I was going to show you how I was going to do this. If this happens, let's say we get a new YouTube channel member. There we go, new member. So if you join our channel by clicking the join button down below, let's uh, do that. Let's do a webhook and change the state of our fan. Boop, boop, boop. Yep, create action. There, done. This is very real. I'm going to leave this turned on until the end of April. So if you join the channel uh, by clicking the join button down below, you're going to turn our fan on full tilt. All right, back on the track here. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our existing channel members, uh, Colorado 4x4 Van, Laurie Berg, Mike Fisher, Scott the Ozone Guy, Jesus Rodriguez, Finn Coaching, and Tim Rotunda, hope I said that right. Uh, those are our tier two and three channel members. It's your contributions that pat us on the back every day and get us out of bed to make videos like this. So thanks so much to them. Thank them down in the comments below if you got to this part of the video. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a channel member, you can click this little join Team Everlanders button coming up here right away. And uh, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.